Hey everybody, it's Carolyn from Homesteading Family. Do you ever need a really quick dessert that is going to come right out of your pantry and the staples that you have in your home? Well, I've got the thing for you. It is an apple brown Betty and this old-fashioned dessert comes together really quickly. It takes about 45 minutes of bake time, but the um, active work time of this is really fast and this is one of my favorite recipes to grab when I have unexpected company and I don't have everything in the house that I would like to have for making a really fancy dessert, but I want them to come into a home that smells great while it's cooking. I can throw it together in just a few minutes. So let's get right to it. Now, what I have here is about a half a loaf, just using the ends of a couple of loaves. This is my sourdough loaf bread that we make here in the house, but you can use any bread that you have laying around, gluten-free included. So whatever bread you have laying around, it's a great use for the end pieces, for a couple day old bread, for bread that's starting to get a little stale. This is a wonderful use for them. Of about three apples. So if you can pull out some apples, that's the way to go. But you could use peaches, you could use frozen berries, you could use cherries, all of those things are gonna turn out amazing. Then I have a cup of butter that's just been cubed and about two cups of brown sugar. So you can see these are all really basic staple items that you probably have in your house. I also have about half a cup of water measured out and ready. And then for the serving, I usually like to serve it with a sweetened cream, which just makes it really good. And for that, you'll need a little bit of uh, regular granulated sugar and a little bit of heavy whipping cream. Okay, first things first, we went ahead and got the oven preheating to 375. And today I'm gonna to cook it in one of my cast iron skillets. You can make this in just a 13 by nine regular casserole pan too. And I went ahead and just generously buttered this. Okay, now we're gonna start by taking care of these apples. I have two of them already peeled, cored, and chopped and um, you know, these are such an easy thing to keep in the house, but if you don't have apples on hand, you could certainly use an apple pie filling, or like I said, you could use one of the other fruits, and you can certainly use these things from a frozen state. So you can see this is real quick. You only need three of these nice size apples, or their equivalent in other fruit. Don't throw away your peels. You can use these for all sorts of great things, including homemade apple cider. So make sure you don't throw away the peels and the cores. You can stick these in a freezer bag in the freezer until you have enough of them to make something out of them. They're also really good dehydrated and powdered for apple powder. They add a lot of great flavor. Okay, so I'm looking for about a half inch chop on this. Just be, um, you don't have to be exact. Quick and close is kind of my motto for a quick dessert like this. Close enough is perfect. Okay, so just getting these sliced down. And save that core. And then into a nice little quick dice here. So you can see how quickly this is gonna make up. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and do about the same thing to that bread. Now you're looking for about half a loaf. This is one of those desserts that, I don't know, you might call it a dump cook method. You kinda of just use what you have on hand. If you're working with pre-sliced bread, you're gonna be looking for approximately eight slices of bread. This is my homemade bread, so I like to store it not sliced. Uh, it just lasts a little bit better, stays a little fresher. And there you go, you can see how easily that slices right through. If you are not making your own homemade bread, you should really be doing it. It's very easy once you have the right skills and um, it's so, so much healthier for you. Okay, so I am just holding these together and putting about the same, about, about <laughs> a half inch cube on it. And same over here. So I'm gonna start here with my skillet and I'm gonna put 
just a nice layer, about half of the breadcrumbs at the bottom. And just move them around here. There we go. And then I'm gonna sprinkle on about half of the apples. Now this is a really old fashioned dessert. You don't see this coming up very often anymore. And I, I'm not really sure why, because it's really good. The one thing you can really do to ruin this dessert is to overcook the top. Then the bread gets kind of hard. Okay, we're gonna sprinkle on about half of the brown sugar. You can certainly go lighter. You can go heavier if you wanted on this. If you wanted, you could put apple pie spice in here, some cinnamon in here, maybe some nutmeg. You could make this fancy whatever way you wanted it to go. Okay, so that is probably about three quarters of a cup that I just put on there. And I'm feeling like everything is pretty well coated. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Okay, and then we do it again. We're gonna put the rest of the bread on and the rest of the apples on. Get all these little bread crumbs can go right in there too. Don't waste those. And the rest of the apples. Okay, and another layer of the brown sugar. And you can see I am not exactly measuring on any of this. So go ahead and just give it a try. See what you come up with. I bet you'll like it. It's hard to go wrong with this dessert. And again, if you were using any extra spices, you would just stick them on right here. Okay. And now we're gonna go ahead and take that half cup of water and I'm just gonna lightly drizzle it on everything. Try to get a little bit in every part of the pan and that's really gonna help this steam while it cooks. And the last step, this cup of cubed butter that I have just gets sprinkled all over the top. And then we're gonna go ahead and cover this with some foil and slide it right into that 375 degree oven. And you're gonna to wanna to let that cook for about 45 minutes covered with the foil. Then you'll wanna take that off, that foil off, and bake it for about 10 more minutes without the foil. Keep a close eye on it at that point because you don't want it to get over brown on the top. This is best in about the middle rack in your oven. All right, now I'm getting ready to take that apple brown Betty out of the oven. We'll take a look at it. While it was on its final 10 minutes of cooking without the tin foil on it, I went ahead and mixed up my thickened sweet cream. Now, if you wanted to, you could certainly serve this with vanilla ice cream or a regular whipped cream, but this is a thickened cream, which is just made with one cup of heavy whipping cream and about a tablespoon of granulated sugar. And I just whipped it until it was just starting to thicken. It's still kind of drizzle, drizzleable, <laughs> pourable, and um, looks perfect. It's gonna be great drizzled right over this. Wow, I wish you guys could smell this. It smells so incredibly good. And it's just barely browned on the top. It's not overcooked, which is exactly how we want it. You don't want to get that bread really toasted on the top. You still want it to be soft and kind of chewy, and that'll be just right. And oh, it smells like heaven. Now, usually I would give this just a minute more to cool, but I'm gonna go ahead and serve this right on up for you. Look at that. Oh, and it, that brown sugar and that butter have combined to make kind of a caramel sauce in there, and that will be amazing. Now, that's kind of a hefty portion I just gave myself. And I'm gonna drizzle this right over the top of all of it, and you have this super easy, super good, simple, old-fashioned dessert that just is going to taste amazing enjoy you guys check out the pdf directions i'll put the link in the description goodbye